I'm broke. They they took everything out of me. That's what stopped me. I ran out of money. She basically, to me, she looks like a model. She looks beautiful on the outside, and I think in the inside, her heart is just as beautiful. My wife knows about Christina. She cut me off all the joint accounts. I have my own account. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Scamfish presented by SocialCatfish.com. She still does, in fact, tells me she loves me, and she does want to get together with me. It's possible that I could leave my wife for her if we were compatible and I was better off with Christina than I am with my wife. On today's episode, we speak to a man named Robert who has thoughts of leaving his wife for a woman he met online named Christina. The biggest issue, he's never met her in person or even talked to her over the phone. Robert has sent over $30,000 to Christina to help her get out of the Ukraine. He wants us to verify his online lover and the other 20 women he has reaching out to him daily. Well, without further ado, let's jump into it, Seekers. Real quick, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Hello, Social Catfish. My name is Robert. I live in Arizona. Been here for about six years. I am married for 20 years. I met my wife. Uh, we were back in New Hampshire at the time. And we met at a, like a social gathering. It was like a Super Bowl party. She's a real nice woman. She's actually a registered nurse. She does hospice care now. So she takes care of people on their last, on a deathbed basically. And she's the main breadwinner in our house. Our physical relationship, to be honest with you, has taken a, taken a big hit. I think she's reached the age, she's 70. She's reached the age where she, that is not uh, as important as it used to be. So that's kind of why I think I was looking for friendship. Despite trying to work through their problems, Robert and his wife gradually started growing further and further apart. My wife and I had gotten, we'd gone through a lot the last couple of years and it's been tough on our relationship. Our marriage is not perfect. As you well know, no marriage is. We're two different people. Uh, we got married in six weeks after meeting each other in uh, New Hampshire. So we didn't really um, find out much about each other and just decided to get married, uh, probably for the sake of hormones. So what made me turn to online dating is I think I was looking for um, friendship somebody that was interested in, you know, um, me, uh, both uh, mentally, emotionally, and physically. And that's what I was not getting from my wife at the time. We were just kind of like um, business partners or roommates. Robert started his online dating journey in October of 2022. He claims he never opened a dating profile and that the woman he would talk to reached out to him through his Facebook account and email. Out of all the hundreds of women that reached out to him, he started to fall for one. So I met Christina Stepanko. She was from Kiev, uh, Ukraine. On October 21st, 2022, and she reached out to me and she asked me if we would like to get to know each other better in an email. And she sent me a picture in the email of her. And so that's how we got started. So Christina is 42, and she is a medical worker. She has uh, jet black hair. She has uh, emerald green eyes. I mean, she always had nice clothes. She was always, makeup was perfect. To me, she looks like a model. It felt like to me, I was talking to a real person. Very personable person, very nice. My favorite is that she's very open, candid, she's sweet. She liked hiking and walking and all, I mean, everything, we, we had a lot in common that way. It started out with, you know, let's just be friends. 
she's in Ukraine and I'm here in Arizona, USA. And, you know, I'm thinking, well, we're miles apart. I thought it was really quick. She claimed that she loved me in three days. And I go, man, how, how can you fall in love in three days? And she goes, because it was love at first sight, you know, because we, we uh, exchanged pictures. And I said, man, not me. I mean, I wasn't even close to being there in the beginning. So it was very quick for her. Looking for, you know, eventually marriage. And she knew I was married and I'm older, you know, and she would tell me, she still does, in fact, tells me she loves me and she does want to get together with me. She just came across as somebody who, a caring person looking for, looking to get out of the war and come to the U.S. She looked beautiful on the outside, and I think in the inside, her heart is just as beautiful. That's how I feel. On February 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine. The invasion has resulted in tens of thousands of deaths. Christina claimed she was caught in the middle of it all. Aside from their romance, Robert felt he had to rescue Christina from the Ukraine at all costs. She would explain the horrible living conditions she had to overcome every day. What I really came to figure out is because she was explaining to me that sometimes I could, we couldn't talk because they didn't have power, no internet. Sometimes they had to go into bomb shelters. So then I realized, well, not only is this, there's another situation is that she is in a war zone and I just felt whether we got together or not, I was going to help her anyway. It was just an automatic thought. And it, it just hit me. And I'm still the same the moment it hit me as today as I was then. Never asked me for money. In fact, I volunteered to give her money to help her out to get out of Ukraine. Yeah, I sent the money to her lawyer, like I mentioned, the 1800 And then Bitcoin after that. The money that I sent was really all the money I had. You know, I mean, it was my personal money. And I was trying to be a good Samaritan helping this woman out, in my mind. It got to the point where there were so many different problems and spending so much of it. You know, I'm taking from our savings account, which I would never do, as I go over 3000 from our joint account. And then I even borrowed $3,500 thinking that, you know, I can fix this. I'll just throw some money at it. So bus fares would be $700. I need money to eat. I'm in the hospital. I paid off her hospital bill. And then it would be, uh, she had bought two airline tickets. I called um, the airline and found the first one was fake. So I figured, well, she made a mistake, you know, and then so I had to buy another airline ticket. And so it just kept going on and on. She was back and forth between being arrested in Germany for a fake ticket when she took it from um, Ukraine to Germany. And it just was one catastrophe after another. In fact, I went down to Tucson airport for two weekends in a row, got a, booked a motel room so I could stay overnight and checked the flights because all of a sudden I lost contact with uh, the original Christina. And it got to the point where it's like, but you're still not here. You're still not here. And and you wonder how I could have gone on this long, but I, I kept trying to get her here. Robert's wife has removed him from all their joint banking accounts. She found out about him sending money to Christina when she logged into their savings account and noticed thousands of dollars missing from the account. He even sent money to Christina for this U.S. passport so they could finally meet in person. But it wasn't enough to get her out of the Ukraine and she still needed more money for lawyer fees. Quite honest, I felt in my mind and heart that she would pay me back. I'm broke. They. They took everything out of me. Um, there ain't no additional money to give. That's what stopped me. I ran out of money, 30, over 30 grand. My wife knows about Christina. Basically, I said that I was trying to help this person, this woman from Ukraine, get to the United States because she was in a war zone. Well, my wife is not jealous over her. I've always told her the truth. I never went, told her about Christina being romantic. She, I think she's a woman. She's not stupid. She, she probably assumes that that's part of it. I'm thinking that um, that I would be able to replace it before she found out about the, the savings. It took about 
3,000 or a little over 3,000 out of the savings. She cut me off all the joint accounts. I have my own account. Uh, you know, she buys the food, but I pay for my, I have a truck payment, so I have to pay so much a month on that. So I'm no longer on uh, any of her accounts, which I agreed to. I said, no, you're my mistake and uh, no problem. Robert still believes Christina is real and is hopeful that he can get her out of the Ukraine and into safety. If he had more money to send, he'd dish out even more to help her get home. Like I said, my heart really was and still is trying to help this woman get out of Ukraine. And if she's for real, uh, I will not stop until I help her out. If Christina came to Arizona and we physically got together, it's possible that I may, I could leave my wife for her if we were compatible and she was, I was better off with Christina than I am with my wife. Uh, and I still believe that the original Christina I met is real. We could fall in love and I would uh, eventually marry her after I got divorced from my wife. All right. Well, we had some work to do, Seekers. We gathered the team to go over all of Robert's information. He had a ton of different images we had to look into. So this week, um, our case, his name is Robert. Um, he's been talking to this woman who he thinks is in Ukraine. Her name is Christina, but um, something that I found really odd about this case is that Robert is still married. He said that if she turns out to be real and she comes over here to the States, he did mention that he would leave his wife to be with her. Something I'm a little concerned about is how transparent he is with us, but is he being open with his wife? Is yeah. she aware of his connection um, and to what depth that connection is? So um, I'll start looking into the identity of the girls and see what we come up with. Robert had women contacting him left and right through his Facebook account, but we focused on the main women he was communicating with. We had to break down all of Christina's photos first. This was the woman he sent $30,000 to. Make sure you stick around until the end. Robert will open up more about the women that he's in contact with. So this is why we're here, because I want to know, and I appreciate you guys work on this. What's up with these girls trying to call you, by the way? Talk to me about that. Some with money, some with no money, some that have to start all over again. Uh, I have a, a black girl. She is a dynamite. She's awesome. I mean, physically, she's brown sugar, man. She's like the best. And we'll try to get him to understand that these women are not who they claim to be. Let's jump back into it, Seekers. After a few days of digging, it was time to sit down with Robert for the first time. We felt we had all we needed to get him to come to terms. If you've made it this far, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. We appreciate you so much. Robert, how you doing, Robert? I got some girl that's trying to call me. What's up with these girls trying to call you, by the way? Talk to me about that. So I'm on Facebook, and all of a sudden, I get these friend requests. I got so many that I have to wait till they're two weeks old before I can say, OK. Then they flood me, and they all want to marry me. It's like, what? I mean, I, I'm no bossa nova, I'm no Romeo. I, it's like, what is this? When I was young and I could handle about 10 of them, I, I never saw any of these girls. Where were they? Well, that's what I'm getting at. Like, I don't get those people contacting me. Drew doesn't. So why do you think they're going after you? I do a ministry, like uh, I try to pass Bible truth and stuff. All I want to do is just give them a witness and say, you know, you got a future bring them hope, happiness, and say it's better than taxes and death. I think some just, some will, you know, they're just looking for money, obviously. Yeah. We know the scammer, this whole thing, with this uh, Ukrainian bit, you know, that was a scam. But the original girl uh, that I started with, she is true, and she still contacts me. She still never asked me for a dime. The thing is, is, you know, you came to us, we have a YouTube channel. You know that, right? Oh yeah, I know what you guys yeah. are about and I understand that. So when we played your video back, we noticed that you're married. Can you just kind of walk us through like how your relationship with your wife is? And we get a, a, a pretty good amount of views on these videos. 
people are going to ask those questions. So I just want to give you the floor to explain. Of course, she's beautiful. She's a young, she's 42 years old. She's a, she's a model. Um, I mean, the girl is absolutely pristine, beautiful girl. So I'm not dead yet. You know, I'm not, you know, and I, I appreciate beauty just like the next guy. So as far as my marriage goes, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm still here. But going back to Facebook, what I was talking about real quick is that, just to be honest, I don't contact none of these women. They contact me. I believe it. I like that's. I think that's what we're getting at. Is that like, why do you think like a 40-year-old model is ran like out of everybody in the world? There are like billions of people in the world. Why are they reaching out and finding you and reaching out to you directly? You know, they all tell me, and I believe it. Uh, not all, but majority say they don't like younger men because they screw up. They screw. You know, they they cheat on them. And, and most of the stories now, you can't believe every one because that's not true. But the ma majority, and you know, if I was to take a poll, most of them say that they get cheated on because young young men are, you know, they their hormones are running and they, and they don't really care what they do as long as they get what they want, right? I mean, I was the young ones too. So they, they like an older person. They know they can trust an older person. They know they can be loyal. That's just coming from them. It's not my words, but it's their words, you know? So from my, our understanding in the video, um, you had said you'd leave your wife. If she's real, she's comes, right? Well, here's how it would work. Let's just say I meet her and she becomes, um, we're compatible in person, you know? Not over Skype, not texting, but we're personable. Yeah, I probably, I'm, I'm most likely I give it a 50-50. I still don't know. I said that before, too. I still don't know if I'd leave because I've never met the girl. I'm, you know, it's like you and I are talking. I, I even had a video call from her. So I know more of you than I know of her as far as seeing them face to face. You know, so it's kind of hard to predict something that you really don't know. You got to realize that I'm older. Uh, I've been married three times. I, this ain't my first rodeo. I know what well, I know what I want. Uh, and if I was to give up where I'm at now, it's going to take a lot. It's going to take a big horse to do it. Yeah. So what are the things that you want? Like, what are you wanting out of life now? I basically want, I want somebody that's really um, physical, you know, in a relationship, physical relationship. Somebody that's over the hill in love with, you know, and I wouldn't give up what I got unless they can fulfill those shoes. So have you talked to your wife about, I mean, because it seems like you've had a relationship for a while, you know what you want. Like, have you talked to her about like those needs? I mean, instead of going to talk to people online? My wife is, she's almost 71. She works very hard. She doesn't have a lot of energy for that kind of stuff anymore. You know, it's not completely, it's not her fault. She just, the old days, your guy's age, you could just say, hey, baby, let's, you know, bing, that's it. <laughs> Uh, There's no instant instant pudding, you know what I mean? I think the thing that's the only thing that's helped us, and I have to say it this way, is that our faith, you know, uh, faith in the Bible, it's a faith thing. A three four chord is hard to be to break. So you got God, you and your spouse. That's kind of how it works. But you know, late uh, as of late, one of the things that you know has affected me is looking for the physical relationship part and um you know that's it's tough uh, i've got a lot of prospects i mean more than this ukrainian girl i mean christina is beautiful her friend melissa is is obviously attractive what other types of women do you have in your dms some with money some with no money some that have to start all over again. Uh, I have a, a black girl. She is a dynamite. She's awesome. I mean, physically, she's brown sugar, man. She's like the best. But what can I say? But you know, I I don't want to hurt anybody, so I try to keep them all going, and I can't keep up right. with them anymore. So okay, we got to get into this. We have to get into this. Let's talk first about the boarding pass. We actually ran the ticket through our image search. And we actually found a match, which is not a good sign, just so you know. It means that the image that you got wasn't unique. So the ticket originated from a, somebody posting it on TripAdvisor. Okay. 
The next thing that we wanted to go over was the email, uh, Christina's email. So we ran that through our website and when we looked it up, we got no results on the email. This usually means that this person just created this email. This person probably doesn't exist. Okay. When looking up an email on our website, it's a huge red flag when you receive no results. 99.9% .9 of the time, an email will have what is called digital footprints. When you sign up for a phone service, email list, even social media, a record would show for an email. So if you get this message, you're either talking to someone that's trying to mask their identity, is extremely private, or just made this email. Do you remember getting this visa? Why was this sent to you? I asked for it, I think. That's why I got it. We ran it through a visa status check and it came back as invalid. So these visa numbers do not exist. And actually, when you're looking at the visa numbers, they must be exactly eight characters yeah. with letters and numbers. Um, this does not have any letters. Obviously, what I'm getting at is this visa's fake. Okay, that's good. I mean, you know, not good, but it's real. Why do you think up until this point you've gotten nothing but fake information from this person? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know if it was fake or not. I just, uh, that was the visa that she uh, sent me. But that's definitely from the real girls, supposedly. So, you know, so this is why we're here, because I want to know, and I appreciate you guys' work on this, so this visa is fake, so that may lead to more problems, you know? The more information we uncovered, Robert realized that everything Christina was telling him was a lie. We ensured we found every woman in all the photos he sent us. He was about to hear the truth about Christina. Yeah, so this is the actual stuff that you've probably been waiting for. We ran multiple image searches and we found multiple women in your case. This is Christina's friend. Um, why did Melissa get in contact with you initially? Yeah, well, she she got in contact with me because she was looking for romance on um, Facebook. Then she asked me for some money and I thought, ah, screw that, you know what I mean? So this woman in this photo, her name is not Melissa. This is adult film actress, Kendra Lust. She's a very common used uh, face in romance scams. Let's hop into Christina. So we ran a reverse image search on Christina and things were a little off as we were running the reverse image searches. There's actually three women, three other women's photos that she's using. When you look at their facial structures, they're completely different. What I caught, uh, what caught my eye was all her photos were like posed. They, she was always dressed up. Got you. When we ran this, this woman's photos, this was a OnlyFans actress named Madeline Monroe. Her name is not Christina. Yeah. The second person is a lady named Florina. Um, she's a fitness influencer. And so she looks completely different from the other two. Um, and that's the one that's laying down in the bathing suit with the dog next to her. And now you can see where we're headed with this. We obviously have three different women. And to the last Christina, the one you've gotten the most images from, the one with the black hair and hazel eyes. Yeah, now that's the picture, yeah. That's the girl, I, and I got, I sent a lot of pictures of this girl. Her name is Yevgenia. She is a makeup artist from Russia. And so this is her real account. And um, her name is not Christina whatsoever. You see how she's always dressed up. So that kind of, you know, it's not like she just woke up and, you know, no makeup. Or I'm going to bed now. Pictures. So it did raise a little bit of a flag, but I just figured, I don't know. These women in these photos have nothing to do with this scam. They have nothing to do with the people behind the profiles of Christina or Melissa. Their photos were just stolen and used to get you to send money. You could tell that the research that we showed Robert hit him hard. What he once thought was an inbox full of beautiful women was now an inbox full of lies. We see this all the time. Once the scammer behind this fake profile knew Robert was willing to send money once, 
his Facebook was flooded with fake profiles. So we just launched this new tool. It's called Unfraud It, right? And so like we do these videos every single week. We have hundreds of thousands of people that come to us and need help, right? And so we built an artificial intelligence tool called Unfraud It where you can drop your conversations into this tool. You can even upload images, passports, contracts, and we'll tell you if they're real or fake. So basically it's like you sitting down with us right now and us spending hours and hours doing research with my team, but you have this um, access to this artificial intelligence tool moving forward. You can use it for free. Wow. It's our gift to you. Yeah. I love it. I understand being in a relationship and having wants and needs and maybe not having those fulfilled, right? So I, I, like, I don't understand where you're coming from, but I have empathy with you where you're coming from. These online relationships are not real relationships. These are people trying to get into your pocket, trying to steal your identity, trying to get money from you. There's ulterior motive here and they're all stealing other people's pictures. It's just not realistic for hot younger women to randomly message older guys and it seems like they've manipulated you into thinking like, hey, look, you know, these younger men cheat and blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying sometimes that doesn't happen, but I am saying that it's just not realistic for, you know, somebody that's in their 60s or 70s to have, you know, hot young women knocking at the door left and right. And I think it's giving you a false perception of like what's truly happening. This could potentially be extremely poisonous for your marriage because in one end you're like, man, I need this. Like, you know, I'm not getting this. And then on the other end, it's, they're all fake people just trying to get in your pocketbook. Makes sense to me. You know, and I, it, my pride isn't hurt or anything like that. In fact, it's kind of a relief knowing that um, I, I don't want all this attention anyway. These fake people are, you know, it's sucking up all my time. So it's a relief. I'll just shrug them off, say, sit, you know, don't answer them back and delete them. You, you know what happens? Like, we've talked to a lot of people in your case and they take up so much of your time, they isolate you from real life. And that's what's happening. And so if you can cut off contact with these people, make your Facebook account private, you can live a, like a real life and, do, and travel like you want to. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, my main reason, and I got caught up in this, is like I said, it's for my ministry. It's, uh, it's taboo for me the way I'm doing it, but now that I've kind of got immune to all this and um, it doesn't affect me personally, but now that I know they're 99% of them are scammers and it's been proven, what helps me now is I can just give them a, a, a witness, you know, and that's the end of it. I won't answer them back uh, unless they say, well, I got I'm, I'm interested, you know, and there might be one out of a hundred, maybe. They're fake, Robert. They're fake. I'm just being real with you. They're fake. If there was a ministry of hot women um, coming to, to hear about the Lord, sign me up for that. But that's not, that's not what's going on. I still can serve a purpose. There may be one in a thousand. Maybe there's more. Maybe there's a percentage even smaller. But if, if that one person that I saved their life, like if I was on a, a, a rescue, you know, a ambulance and a fire rescue, and I saved a life, I would feel, you would too. We'd all feel good about it. You, you know what I would feel good about, Robert? Like, I would feel good, like, if I helped you in your wife's relationship. That's what I feel good about. And I think, like, in man-to-man, -man, just being, like, candid with you, like, I appreciate you wanting to serve the Lord and do this, right? But serving your wife is pretty honorable, too. And I don't think you sitting here talking to all these random women online is only about religion. Serving your wife is, is even more important. And so... Take that advice or don't, but like, I'm just going to be candid with you just as a married man, whether you listen to my advice or not, it's really up to you. I agree. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's good counsel. That comes right from the Bible itself. That's right, baby. I know. I'll take your responsibility. <laughs> yeah. You get, you get misled like I was. Thank you very much. I, 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 I can take it, you know, let's get you set up with this tool, Robert. So that no matter who you're talking to or dealing with online, it's not just for romance scams. It's for, you get a text message and you don't recognize, you get an email. If you have any doubt, you drop it in this tool and we'll evaluate the tool for you. It incorporates the knowledge that we have as investigators and it incorporates the tools that we've built internally. So I think it will change things for you. We wish you the absolute best of luck and we'll stay in touch if you have any questions, okay? I gotta use that right now and go through all these lists of these girls like this. Is. Yeah, to keep you busy for a month. Yeah, that's okay, because every time they come in, I will check them and say, 
And like yeah. you said, 99% of them are gone. They'll be gone, but they still got, got served. And that's yeah. my yeah. job. All right. All right. Peace nice talking, Robert. Robert. All right. See you, guys. All right. Take care. Robert has a lot to learn when it comes to the internet. We suspect he may be involved in more than just romance scams. When we looked into his Facebook, we found 90% of his Facebook friends were fake profiles. Do you think Robert will ever learn? Let us know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching everyone. We release new videos every Wednesday. If you are trying to reach out to us to verify someone you're talking to online, or maybe your friend or family member needs an intervention, you can reach out to us by emailing us at sharemystory@socialcatfish.com. Thanks for watching.